Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a man wanted for aiding and abetting attempted murder. According to court documents, the 19 year old man was involved in a drive by shooting back in September. He is five foot four and weighs 109 pounds. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers. The driver accused of hitting a man on North Cliff Avenue is accused of having a suspended license and no insurance. But police do not expect to charge him in connection with the crash itself. Authorities say the victim was not in a crosswalk last night and was wearing dark clothing, making it difficult for the driver to see him. The 52-year-old man went to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police did not have an update on his condition this morning. A 40-year-old man from Whitewood has been identified as the person who died in a single vehicle crash east of Spearfish. Last Wednesday, Michael Richardson Jr. was driving a Silverado pickup eastbound on Interstate 90 when he lost control and struck a concrete pillar under an overpass. Richardson was pronounced dead at the scene. The officials say he was not wearing a seatbelt. The crash remains under investigation. Turning to weather, snow is part of the equation today, but after today, the last day of February, it's going to be pretty quiet for a while, won't it? Yeah, overall, it will be pretty quiet as we head into the new month old saying of March coming in like a lion and out like a lamb. Well, we're going to flip that. Uh, by and large, March comes in like a lamb across much of Kilgoland, but they did mention a few exceptions. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's start up in Aberdeen, up at the campus of Northern State. This is a view to the southeast right now, 34, uh, but a bit of a breezy 34. An east wind at 15 miles per hour. That does put the wind chill in the low to mid 20s up that way. But now let's face it, we've experienced far worse this winter. Oh, by the way, today is the last day of meteorological winter. I'm going to throw that out there for people that are waiting for spring to come around. Uh, meanwhile, in Falls Park, 36, a lot of cloud cover above. That's going to be a prevailing theme as well today. Uh, south wind at 15 miles per hour. Some visibility issues for a few. Chamberlain right around a mile along I-90, so you will want to keep that in mind if your travels take you out that way. Northeast of winter as well. Mulbridge even getting in at some less than ideal visibility. Three miles up that way. They're also at 35 up in Mulbridge. 34 for Faith 41, Spearfish and Phillip, 36 in Rapid City, along here with here in Sioux Falls, and in Spencer, 35 Yankton, 32 here on, and 20s are popping up now and again up to the northeast. Winds are lighter to the east, a little bit stronger West River, a bit of an inverse of what we had yesterday, but still it's a southerly breeze, so that is bringing in a little extra moisture, which will be something that plays a factor in the potential for some rain out in western portions of Kelowind. In fact, uh, on satellite and radar, we have been seeing some rain showers in the pier area with some snow up in Mulbridge. We'll check on, on them in a little bit. Some light snow showers also a Mitchell down to Yankton, to Charles Mix in Bonham County. That's going to try and make its presence known around here a little bit later on, but minimal if any accumulation is expected to the southeast. That's not the case north of Highway 212. Winter weather advisory is in place today through at least Wednesday morning in the northeastern corner of Kelloland toward the Prairie Coteau. We're talking about uh, that advisory going until the afternoon on Wednesday. Details on that and the rest of your seven day forecast are going to be coming up. Thank you, Adam. The cornerstone of the Sanford Sports Complex is celebrating a milestone. The Sanford Pentagon opened its doors in 2013 and has hosted nearly 100 Division I athletic events, including a nationally televised top three men's basketball game between Gonzaga and Iowa. At the center of every matchup is Heritage Court and its 1950s style setting. It was a bold vision, and it was a bold vision by our leadership at the time to, to build it in that style, that manner, uh, and it was very purposeful. It's nice to see on camera, it's nice to see online, but when people walk through, they're really blown away of, of the little details of what this place really is. In tonight's Eye on Kellen, we look back at some of the Sanford Pentagon's most memorable moments and how the venue has helped change the landscape of sports in Sioux Falls. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments today over President Joe Biden's plan to forgive student loan debt for more than 40 million Americans. After numerous lower court challenges, the program is on hold until the justices decide. Nicole Antonio reports from the Supreme Court. Demonstrators gathered outside the Supreme Court as justices considered two different challenges. One is by six Republican-led states that say the debt forgiveness program will cost them money. In court papers, they say it's a breathtaking and transformative exercise of power. 
The other challenge is by two students who say the program should do more to relieve student debt. This is preventing people from doing what they have to do, pay bills, start families, continue with their businesses. During oral arguments, Chief Justice John Roberts asked the government's lawyers about the importance of separation of powers. I just wonder, given the posture of the case and given our historic concern about uh, separation of powers, you would recognize at least that this is a case that presents extraordinarily serious, important issues. With respect to the role for Congress, I think what's clear is, of course, we're recognizing that Congress could take additional action if it disapproves this plan. The justices, six conservatives and three liberals, will eventually decide if President Biden has the authority to wipe away about half a trillion dollars in student debt. The president's lawyers are arguing the federal law grants him the power to forgive the loans, while opponents say he's going too far. Under the plan, up to 43 million people would be eligible for some federal student loan debt relief. People making less than $125,000 a year could see $10,000 in student loan debt forgiven. And people who got Pell Grants could get up to $20,000 forgiven. A decision is expected by the end of the current term in late June. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, the Supreme Court. After Biden announced the plan last August, 26 million people applied before lower courts put it all on hold. The crackdown on TikTok continues. The White House today gave government agencies 30 days to remove the video sharing app from all federal devices and computer systems. The Office of Management and Budget says the move is aimed at protecting U.S. data. Officials suspect that China is using the app to spy on Americans. The ban does not impact the more than 100 million Americans who use TikTok on non-government devices.